Hey guys, Vladimir here with another Fusion 360 tutorial for you. So in my last video, we looked at designing this icosahedron and we were able to do it all with one sketch. Well, I kind of cheated because we used 3D sketch, but still, it's a very useful technique. Uh, one you really want to keep in your back pocket um, and keep it handy there when you need to design, especially something like this where it can make that workflow just so much more efficient. So definitely check out that video if you haven't yet. Um, but where I left off with that is I said I wanted to um, discuss how I then brought in this pattern here that I used to extrude my model and, and then basically uh, create this design you see here um, with that pattern. And what I did was I brought an SVG file that was made in Illustrator. So there are countless reasons as to why you may not want to create a design like this in Fusion 360. Um, for example, if you just know a 2D software a little bit better and can navigate it better, you may want to you know, use Illustrator or Inkscape, for example, to make this and then bring it into Fusion 360. Or maybe you're working with a team and someone has a file they did in Corel Draw and they sent it to you. And then you can go ahead and bring it into Fusion 360 and you know apply it to your model. Um, so I wanted to look at that, but Instead of um, just kind of showing you how I made this specific design, I kind of wanted to jump in into more of a best practices when dealing with SVG files in Fusion 360. So we're actually going to look at a different design that I made, which is this dodecahedron here. And with this design, I actually approached it differently. I didn't use 3D Sketch. I basically created one of these panels here. So if I click here and isolate this one here so we can see it. Um, you'll see that it's just one panel. It has thickness, so this is meant to be laser cut out of three millimeter plywood. So I made it three millimeters, and then what I did is I then you well I turned it into a component first, and then I um, used joints to um, build this entire thing here. So if I just actually um, take this timeline here and bring it back let me just slide this all the way back and then hit play you'll kind of see it being uh, reconstructed so you see there how i just laid those panels flat did basically a rectangular pattern and then a joint um, basically joints i should say that and then to combine everything together um, so that's how i approach that you can see let me just kind of go forward here so i made one brought in one component and made a layout of them here and then uh, went ahead and just started um, using joints to combine it all and build it like that. So just a different approach than what we used last time, but these are different techniques that you'll you want to keep uh, in mind because there's uh, a million ways to do the same thing in Fusion 360 and you're just going to use the best approach that works for you. So okay, having um, sort of set that up, uh, I now want to show you how I brought the SVG file here. And again, just going into some best practices and some things you want to um, know how to address when you're bringing a SVG files. Um, specifically, um, they don't always come in scaled right, so you need to go ahead and scale it. And there's different ways to do that, so we'll go over that and then uh, a few other things. But all right, we'll jump right in. And if you're new to Fusion 360 and you want the fastest way and least painful way to get up and running with Fusion 360, um, in a very enjoyable way, I should say. Check out my uh, Quick Start course. I have the link down below. And I also have my Fusion 360 sketch constraint cheat sheet, which goes over all the sketch constraints and shows how each one works. It's a PDF, basically, that you'll want to print out and keep with you. Um, as you begin to design and start using uh, sketch constraints, it's going to become a really useful resource. So I've got the links of those two down below. So I'll go ahead and check that out. All right, let's go ahead and jump into today's tutorial. Okay, so first let's uh, back up a little bit and go back to Illustrator where I have my design here. So this is the design I want to bring in. Now, the one thing I want to show you here, if I select it, I can see my width is 280 millimeters and that's the measurement from this uh, right edge to the left edge here. So the widest portion there. So at this point, uh, what I can do is just go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna save this as an SVG format here and choose where I want to save it, click save, and then I can just go into Fusion 360. We'll begin a new design here and I can go to insert down to insert SVG. Choose where I saved my file and simply click on it and choose open. 
Now, Fusion is going to ask me what plane I want to throw that in. So I'm going to choose my uh, XY plane here. And if I zoom out, you can see that there is my file. And I can move it around or have some more options here, but I'm just going to click OK for now. Uh, one thing I want to point out, notice that Fusion creates a new sketch. So if you look at your timeline here, it says sketch one. It actually creates a sketch and throws that SVG design into that sketch. So you don't have to create a sketch ahead of time. Just going through that insert SVG file uh, or insert SVG will automatically um, create a sketch and throw that design in there. All right, the first thing I want to check is to see if this is the right size. So I'll go to inspect and then just choose those two same points. And I could see that this is off. It came in at 209 where my Fusion design, or I'm sorry, my Illustrator design here uh, is at 280. So we're going to have to do uh, a bit of scaling there to bring it to the right size. So that's a problem you're going to face with bringing SVG files into Fusion. Unless if you know a way to get that to uh, work out where the um, scale comes in at the uh, you know what it's supposed to um, if you know of something maybe there's there's some way of doing it when I choose my save formats in Illustrator uh, let me know in the comments because I haven't found a way um, so what I'm going to do here is scale this now there's a few ways to do that but uh, and I'll show you each one so the first thing actually you'll notice is if uh, we try to scale this we're within the sketch environment so we can go to modify sketch scale notice if i try to select here um, my sketch here to scale it's not going to select it well that's because this is fixed as you can see it came in a green color uh, whenever something is green in fusion 360 that means it's fixed so it's the same way let's say i create a sketch here just a circle and then i choose my fixed constraint and apply it to that circle notice how it turns the same color it's green which means it's locked in place i can't move it anywhere so the first thing we're going to have to do is unfix uh, our design here. So what we can do is uh, simply click on the little lock button here in our constraint, highlight our sketch, and now you see it turned it blue. So now that it's blue, we can actually scale it. We can even select it and move it around. So let's go ahead and scale it. Now I can go to Modify, Sketch, Scale, and Highlight. And I'm going to need to choose a point. So I'm going to go to a point here. Select. I'm just going to choose the origin point there. And my scale factor, just a quick calculation from what the size needs to be uh, versus what it is, uh, gave me a scale factor of 1.33427. You can get as precise as you need to get. It doesn't have to be you know, that precise. But anyway, we'll click OK. And now I can click on inspect to verify. I'll just click on these points here to verify that width and I'm at 280. All right, I'll close that. And so that's one way we can scale. Okay, I'll show you a couple more ways. So let me undo to before I set the scale here. And at this point we're fixed, right? I haven't unfixed it. Um, I just brought in my design here and it's as is. So an easier method may be to just not even deal with trying to scale within the sketch environment. You can simply click on finish sketch and that's going to take you to your 3D workspace. And here you also have a way to, to scale. You can just go to modify and it says scale. Um, this is what you would use normally to scale your 3D models, um, but it actually works for sketches as well. Notice it doesn't say sketch scale, it just says scale. So we can click on it and then you can expand your sketches here and then choose your sketch here on the browser. And you can simply then type in your scale factor. I'll just do 1.334 here and go ahead and click on inspect just to verify and choose these two points. And I can see, whoops, you want to make sure you select the point and not the line. Sometimes you might have to zoom in. All right, we'll get that point. All right, so we're at 280. So that works as well. And that, um, this way is, a, you know, it's, if you don't really need to unfix it, um, it actually can be faster. Just finish that sketch, come to your 3D workspace, and then use the modify scale. All right, I'll show you one more method. And so this method, let's create a new design here. It's right when you bring in that design, 
So we'll go to insert SVG. Again, we'll choose our file here. And at this point, right when we bring it in, notice we have an option here to do a sketch scale. Um, the only thing here is you may not know right away what that scale factor should be. So you may have to bring it in first and then do that measurement and then see what it is and then go ahead and undo and then bring it in again. So you'll bring it in one more time. And once you know, you know, the size it comes in versus the size uh, it needs to be, you can just go ahead and then re-enter it or reinsert it and then go ahead and type your scale right away and then that takes care of it and you can also move it into place so um, you can do it right there as well okay so that takes care of scaling another tip i want to give when working with svg files um, for example with this file here with this design i want to be able to take this uh, design and move it to the center here so that I can take advantage of my uh, vertical axis there to then create my patterns that I need to. Um, you know, with other models, sometimes you have the option of just, uh, depending on how it was designed, you can automatically send it to be right at the center of the origin, which is very useful. Um, in this case, uh, there's a few um, tricks here that you can do. First, if we want to move this sketch, we're going to have to uh, unfix it. So we'll go to our lock here, select everything. And now it's unfixed. Now I'm going to zoom into that circle and try to select it. Um, in this case, it's actually uh, recognizing it as a circle. It doesn't always do that. So uh, keep that in mind. So um, in this case, I, I got lucky. Um, so what I can do here is I can simply right click, go to move copy, and I'm going to highlight the entire sketch here. And then I'm going to choose my point to point as my move type. Zoom in. I'm going to choose the center of that circle there and then choose the origin here. And it'll move it right to the center there. So now I can go ahead, you know, extrude this turn it into a component and then create my uh, joints here to finish building uh, my model. But let me show you, like I said, um, you're not always going to get lucky where the circle is actually going to come in. A lot of times what happens is the circle will come in as different splines. And in that case, you're not going to get a center point there. Um, so when that happens, uh, it'll look it'll look perfectly like a circle. It just won't be a circle or fusion won't recognize it as a circle and you're, you're going to have a hard time finding that center. A quick way to fix that is you just take that circle, hit X to make it a, a construction line. And then you want to come in with your three point circle. So go down to circle, do a three point circle. And the way the three point circle works is you can choose any uh, any uh, point on the circle. Um, that you have here. So my construction line here, I'm just going to use that um, to get the hover over it until you get the little X's right there in the blue. So I'll choose my second one. And now I'm going to choose my third point there and it'll give me a circle with a center point. All right. So now what you can do is go ahead and right click, move copy, highlight everything point to point choose that center point and then choose your center click OK and there we have it I can extrude this to six millimeters uh, which is the size of plywood I'm going to be using and there we have it and next I can simply go ahead and yeah, maybe depending what I want to do with it either construct this as a body or if I want to make it into a component and use joints I can do that and then finish assembling it to have this here. All right, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions or anything I didn't cover in regards to working with SVGs, I'll leave them in the comments below um, and I'll address them. Uh, also, I meant to um, mention this. If you want to see more about joints, uh, for example, how I approach that dodecahedron uh, design, if you want to see how I actually was able to create a component and build the whole thing strictly from using joints, uh, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough interest, then uh, maybe I'll do a separate tutorial on that as well. 
Um, so, all right, I hope you enjoyed this and um, just leave any questions below and I will see you in the next video.